You're about to meet a man who has four wives, and they'll all say they're one big happy family. And next here tonight, the news about polygamy and whether a man can live with more than one wife. To be clear, it's absolutely illegal in this country to have a marriage license with more than one person at one time. But a big to court decision coming out of Utah seems to say it's okay if you just skip the official piece of paper. We're not talking about this. What does it mean for these girls to be your girlfriends? We're talking about this. I believe in living this lifestyle. We know them as reality TV stars on the hit show Sister Wives. I wouldn't want anything else. But now Hollywood's most famous polygamists have taken on a new unlikely role as legal crusaders embroiled in a courtroom fight over the fate of polygamy. Are you prepared to take this all the way to the Supreme Court if you have to? Absolutely. It is an epic battle. Cody Brown and all those wives, Mary, Janelle, Robin, and Christine, against the state of Utah. We're moving so we can stay a family. We're going to move in three days. After the family flaunted their plural lifestyle on TV, authorities went after them, and the Browns fled Utah for Nevada. It's brain damage to move this group. Then they sued, claiming a First Amendment right to live how they want to live. It was really an issue of freedom of expression, freedom of love. Anybody should be able to organize their family according to how they choose. And they won the first American polygamy ruling in more than 130 years. A federal judge siding with them in December, declaring a key part of Utah's polygamy law unconstitutional. Cody Brown can openly live with his wives just as long as there is only one marriage license. And Cody is only legally married to Mary Brown. The others are his spiritual wives. It's nice, though, to not have the word felon attached to our names. Thousands of people living plural marriage in Utah now are, are free. The you got this conversation started with that piece that you wrote. Yeah about legalizing poly polygamy in the United States. <laughs> okay, you're laughing. <laughs> State your case. You know, I, I like to think that my job is to start conversations, not end them. So while I have questions and I have my own perspective, of course, I think that all of these perspectives are really valuable, and I'm glad that we're talking about this, because I think the example of plural marriage raises a lot of really important questions about the way our government interacts with our sexual and romantic lives, and the role that religion plays uh, in the state in this country. Right from the beginning, I think it's important to be very clear that calling for the legalization or decriminalization of polygamy is not the same thing as condoning abuse. People who abuse women and children are criminals, and those crimes should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But I do think that crime, when forced into isolation, can kind of flourish unchecked. And I do think there are responsible, consensual, adult polygamous families out there. Uh, and in a country like the United States that specifically espouses the value of freedom of religious expression, I think we need to ask ourselves whether this is an adult choice that should be protected, particularly when it is chosen for religious reasons. Falling in love with this man and you know having this newfound love but also having a little bit of envy over their history and the depth of their relationship that I just couldn't have right then, you know. Um, on the other hand, it was just a large and loving family welcoming me in. While they've been public about their lifestyle for some time, they've always worried that Joe could face arrest under the state's anti-polygamy laws. But in December, that became less likely. A federal judge ruled that a law banning unlawful cohabitation goes against the right to freedom of religion. While the main branch of the Mormon faith banned polygamy in the 1890s, the Dagas are members of one of the offshoots that continue the practice. As long as it's adults freely choosing what they want, then I, I don't feel like it would be my place to tell somebody else you can't choose to love who you love. And I think you're going to start seeing more people like us become more public. Well, I've had many of our friends and relatives that have said, you know, I could just tell people at work who I am now. What defines a family has certainly changed throughout the years. These days, families include single parents, step-parents, even two moms or two dads. And as TLC is about to document, one dad and multiple moms. Sister Wives takes viewers inside the relationship of one man with three wives and the addition of wife number four. 20 years ago, I married Mary. And then 17 years ago, I married Janelle. And then 16 years ago, I married Christine. 
I just fell in love, and then I fell in love again, and then I fell in love again. He says, as long as all parties are consenting adults who know what they're getting themselves into, why is it anyone else's business? How does it hurt me? Oh, oh, but, oh but they ask yes. us, um, how do you make it all work? What about jealousy? What about that jealousy? Like that, well, jealousy is just a natural feeling, I think, that everybody feels. But as long as you realize who you are, I think women, all of us, every woman needs to feel confident in who they are. And that's really just how you handle um, anything. I mean, I, I mean, my, I, for me, I mean, from my own experience, jealousy is almost always an insecurity. Something I'm insecure about is causing me to yeah. feel bad. You know, so I had to really find my own voice, be, be able to embrace who I was as a person and enjoy my strengths and be able to recognize everybody else's strengths too. When you become confident in who you are... You don't the, need him to tell you you're okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like I, I feel like I. But I brought, you're sharing. I think that my. I thought the number one question would be, how can you share one man, all three women? Oh, see, that's like not even. A, uh, it, it, it's not sharing. It's it's like you are getting. He's a really great guy because he knows how to do this. And so, in order, it's it's like you you get this part of this really great, awesome person. And it's it's not even like you have only like what no, a quarter. No, like, it's like so much. I don't feel gypped at all. Like it's a family. But how yeah. does it work? I mean, just to, to get to the nitty gritty here, Cody. Every night, do you stay with this, a different wife? You, you, we, yeah, we've just got a schedule. We rotate through a schedule, and it's it so everybody gets their time. We we try to be fair with the time. We try to be fair with the relationships, and we function very well together. The group of us actually do things together. This is 28-year-old Isaiah and his two wives, 28-year-old Marlene and 20-year-old Becca. So you two have been married for how long? 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you two have been married for how long? Us three have been married for about a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Marlene and Isaiah married young. Both were only 18, but committed to living in a plural marriage. If Isaiah would have told me that he didn't want this before we got married, I wouldn't have married him. Vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> After eight years of living in monogamy, they were joined by a second wife, Becca. So what happened with you, Becca? One day I was in church, and I was sitting with my sister Sharon, and I saw him walk through the door. I had a feeling just come over me, and um, I turned to Sharon, and I said, yeah, that's... That's who I feel like I belong to. At 19, Becca married Isaiah and Marlene. As I watch the three of them laughing, joking, and making sushi, they make it look so easy. They could be the poster family for polygamy. And I have to wonder, did they always get along this well? It kind of messed with my head a little bit. I mean, we're so different, you know? I mean, I'm tall, she's short, I'm, she's blonde, I'm brunette. Would you characterize it as kind of a, a, a little envy or jealousy initially? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that there's absolutely jealousies to work through. I think it's a, a normal human emotion. But a convert to Islam, my family are not Muslim, they don't understand this, and there's a big taboo. It is purely society's taboo. I mean, I would love to just be able to tell all of my friends and family back in the UK, where I'm from, where I was raised, about this marriage and how happy I am. You can't look at it from sharing your man aspect. You have to look at it like joining the family. Like her kids are my kids and if I couldn't have kids, I would still have kids. If he was gone, I wouldn't be alone, I would have her, you know? And so it's a lot more than just being jealous over your man, you know? Because that's nothing compared to what you have. After a year of marriage, Marlene and Becca say they've worked through the initial bumps in the road and are now almost inseparable. If, if it is for me and if I'm willing to do that, I feel like I have every right. Need to watch over and protect us. As far as just our interaction, the kids have all been raised um, all together as a family and they just interact really well together. They're siblings and they love each other. and. I don't know, it just works really well. This young family has redefined what a happy marriage can look like. Oh, I really do love her. She treats me like a wife, you know? She wants the same for me that she wants for herself. And I don't know, she's a huge blessing. So here it goes. I'm coming back from an event 
few months ago and my driver is from Pakistan and we're chatting, you know how taxi drivers like to chat. He's telling me about his first wife who just came over from Pakistan. She's really young, she's got two toddlers and I'm empathizing a lot and telling him the story um, about, you know, she just needs to integrate, she needs to get more friends and chat and so we get on very, very well. The very end of the journey, so we get back to my house in Brooklyn, he says, would you like to be my second wife? And so I never ever thought about polygamy until that actual moment. <laughs> and the trouble is, he was so incredibly good looking that I actually considered it. Islam does allow for polygamy. And polygamy is the practice where a man is allowed to have more than one wife. Uh, it, is, it is allowed. It's not necessarily something that is recommended all the time or an obligation. For a Muslim, a Muslim is allowed to have more than one wife. And this is such a big problem. Some people, they see it and they say that uh, they just cannot understand it, like the brother here is, is saying. Let me give you a practical situation where I come from in the U.S. You know, in the U.S. there are different ethnicities and there are different minorities. Of these ethnicities, there are the African Americans. And these are the black people in the U.S. that were brought in as slaves from America to begin with, been living under slavery for a very long time. We have a social problem within the African-American segment in that society. What is that problem? At any given day, pay attention to this one, please. At any given day, one of every three African-American males between the ages of 18 and 35 is in prison. One of every African-American males between the ages of 18 and 35 is in the military. Now remember, these are people who have been living under uh, slavery for such a long time, they have not had the time or the opportunity for them to come back to, you know, to join society and has not been facilitated for them as, as, as it should have been. What's happening at this point is that the number of, of, of African American women is by far exceeding the number of African men. They're either in prison or they are in, uh, in, the, uh, in the military. It has gotten so bad that in some areas, for every one eligible man, there are eight unmarried women in that community. They refer to this in sociology as sex ratio. The number of men for every 100, for every 100 eligible uh, women for marriage. And most of the time, in humanity, we have what we call low sex ratio, meaning that the number, or high sex ratio, meaning that the number of women exceeds the number of men all the time. So now African-American sociologists, they got together and they said, we have a social problem. What do we do? Obviously, marrying from other minorities is not, is not an option. What do we do? And here's what they came up with. They came up with three solutions. They said, look, we live in a capitalistic country. In capitalism, it is about competition. You compete. You win yourself a man, good for you. You do not win a man, tough luck. That's it. End of the story. The other solution was, what we need to do is that we need to redefine what we mean by relationships. And they said, therefore, a woman would have to have a mate for uh, intellectual stimulation. She has to have a mate to drink coffee with, another mate to study with, another mate to socialize with, and somebody else to fill and satisfy her sexual passion. So what they said is that she has got to become a part of so many people. Another group of African-American sociologists, they said, wait a minute. From the origins that we come from, we are, uh, our community has been known to be polygamist. What we say is this, I agree with you. There is some sort of evil in this process. However, I am ready to accept any lesser evil that you can provide for this problem. A woman wants to be a mother. Why is she deprived from this? A woman has just lost her husband. Not that a woman cannot live on her own or support her, uh, herself by her own, but why, why does she have to suffer the result of losing a companion? So Islam says that there is a solution. It may not be a solution that is favored by all, however, it is a very, very practical solution that is very humane. Instead of a woman being uh, used and abused as a mistress, where he comes at different parts of the night, not, know, not wanting to know what he, what he is doing with her. She cannot take pride in being a wife of this man where she is part of his life. Islam says that is not the case. 
because you are doing her a favor by satisfying her, her passion, it does not mean that you dehumanize her. And as a result, Islam has suggested the, the concept of polygamy. But I will give you a challenge. Bring a better solution and I will, and I will follow it.